Good morning and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Wednesday, the 11th of August, I believe it is. I hope you're having a great day. Today I'd just like to talk a little bit about storytelling and telling our story and who gets to tell what story. This past weekend I had the privilege of going to Frog Lake First Nation and a lay reader uh, who was in charge of um, a lay pastor at the Frog Lake Church, Church of the Nativity, um, at First Nation. His name is Fred Matthews and he is um, a gentleman I've met through Facebook and finally got to meet face to face last week uh, because he he created an event, um, invited Anglicans from the Diocese of Edmonton to come to Frog Lake to attend a powwow. Unfortunately, um, due to some unforeseen weather and me and my inability to stay dry, um, I missed the powwow part, but I did get to participate in a really interesting part of the morning when Fred had invited an elder from Frog Lake First Nation to come out and talk to us about the historic site. Now I think some people were expecting to hear all about the, the, the massacre at, at, for, at, that, um, at that site, but that's not what happened. We heard instead the stories sort of ref alluded to what happened there, but more heard the story of the elder who was speaking and his his connection with the land and his connection with his ancestors and the peoples who inhabited or not inhabited the peoples who lived on and and worked the land and and lived in community with the people around the farmers and other people um, other first nations people in that area and while that was fascinating what i found really to be the most interesting and most eye-opening part of the morning of the day was when Fred was was willing he was starting to think that the elder we seemed to have some timing difficulties and the elder wasn't there when we thought he should be and it was one we were kind of wondering if he would come and Fred was hesitant to tell the story about Frog Lake First Nation because it wasn't his story to tell I believe that Fred said he is a Mohawk, he is Mohawk descent, and this I believe is Cree, Cree Nation. And so he didn't feel it was appropriate that he would tell another's story. And then of course the elder did show up and he told us his story and his presentation, the way he spoke, the his mannerisms, it was beautiful. And it was it was one who knows how to tell a story to my guess is a whole lot of people who don't know how who don't have a lot of practice in listening to story. And so there's a second learning for me there is, is what do I need to do to learn how to become a listener? How do I become a person who can simply sink into a story and allow it to wash over me and speak whatever truth it will speak? I have a fly here in the room with me. But the first learning I had was in this incredible sense of humility, and recognition that Fred was saying, this is not my story to tell. If I need to, I will, but I, I prefer not to. It is not my story to tell. And that got me thinking a lot about, as a Christian, we talk about our need to tell the story, to share the gospel with other people. And sometimes I wonder, you know, so it's so, so hard to tell the story of Jesus to other people. It's, I get tongue tied or I don't know which part of the story to share or which, you know, what am I supposed to say? And then I realized when, when Fred was talking and not talking, I realized that the only story that I have the right to tell is my story, my gospel story. I can't tell someone of Jesus Christ. I can give them a Bible. I can read them stories from the Bible but I cannot tell them the gospel of Jesus. They need to experience Jesus speaking to them themselves. What I can offer them is the gospel according to me, the gospel that I have experienced of Jesus Christ that I can then share with another. That is no one else's story to share. There are parts of my faith life that I could certainly, um, Rob could probably tell you about, but it would not have the same passion. It would not have the same truth as the story that I would, the, the same story that I may share with you when it's coming from me as the one who experienced it. This idea that we have to 
allow others to tell their own story and allow ourselves the, the, the freedom, give ourselves the permission to tell our story as well. That's huge. That is huge. Especially right now, considering what's happening in Canada, not really around the world, but in Canada for us, we are listening to a people who have been pushed down, people who have been told not to speak, people who have been ignored for so long. And now their story is coming out. And it's not coming out in dribs and drabs anymore. It is coming out like a tsunami. Many, many people have pain and suffering. Many, many people have wonderful stories to share. Stories of joy and peace and love and hope. But right now, it's like the, the lid got taken off a boiling pot and it's all bubbling over and all these stories are coming out. And, and we, those who aren't the storytellers, are caught unawares saying, okay, this is overwhelming. What do I do? How do I respond to the stories? How do I, what do I do with them? Am I called to tell their stories to others? No. No, it's not our place to, to tell those stories to others. We, we can't possibly do that. It's our place to listen to those stories, to put ourselves in positions where we can listen. A few of my colleagues have stated that, you know, who went to the powwow, that, that they were able to have conversations with people that really were profound for them. And I look forward to next year being able to go to the powwow and wear my collar and maybe have some of those conversations myself. But I'm very much hoping that between now and next year, there will be opportunities when I can sit down and have those conversations. Not just conversations, but opportunities to listen to storytelling, to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through another, to speak their truth and their experience, that I might take take it in and absorb it and receive it as gift and then allow the Holy Spirit to engage me in whatever ways God would have me be engaged. I think that we have become a community, a society that does not know how to listen anymore. We certainly, I think, don't know how to tell stories. This, you know, computers and Twitter and Instagram and Facebook those aren't storytellings. Those are like little snapshots that could be interpreted in a million different ways. Real storytelling takes time. It takes the patience and the humility to listen as another shares their truth in whatever way they decide they would like to share that truth. Some people tell their story in a straight line, like, you know, they begin at the beginning and they go to the end. But a lot of people tell their story in a much more um, circuitous manner because the story itself is the message not just the outcome the moral the the ending but what is actually happening to that person and what is happening to you as you are hearing that story all becomes part of the story and it changes I believe the person who is hearing but also the person who is is telling the story and we have a really long way to go in becoming story listeners. And I don't think that any of us who are listening to these stories will be able to even articulate our own stories to become good storytellers to our own children and grandchildren, to our own communities, until we first learn how to listen. And so I encourage you to find people to listen to, whether it is Indigenous peoples who can share with you their stories or even simply listening to something, listen to the stories being told online through video resources. But better yet, if you have opportunity to meet with someone, to sit face to face, to offer them your gift of time, your gift of wi willingness to listen, your gift of humility to allow them to teach you, to share their story without being interrupted or interpreted or, oh yes, I understand, we don't. Just cut it out. We don't. Allow them to tell their story. And as we do, we will learn how to tell ours. And then maybe we won't be so hesitant when it comes time to telling our gospel story, our Christian faith story. Because once we have learned how to listen, then we'll know how to share it. So to my new friend, Fred Matthews, thank you so much for the opportunity to, to be with you and to listen and to witness your humility as you were reluctant to tell another story. And to the elder who spoke, 
I thank him profusely for giving us that day, for giving us his time, for sharing with us that which is who he is. It was a gift and it was an honor to receive. God bless you as you listen this day. And God bless you as you share your story too. I will see you tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.